Wait one second. It's not quite right. All right, we're going to do this instead. Always an adventure when you have a webinar and it doesn't quite work out what you want with the sharing tools, but that's okay. So I'm just going to go ahead and do it in this view. I uh, hope that's not an issue for anybody. If you can't hear me, let me know. But again, uh, thank you, Brittany. And thanks everybody for showing up today I'm, to I'm hear more about. I can't see your screen. Oh, you can't? Yeah. One second. All right, can you see it now? Yep, there we go. Okay, all right. So back to the beginning. We are here to talk about uh, EDI automation and to JD Edwards. Uh, thank you, Brittany. And thanks everyone for coming today. I'm Matt Rogers with Channel Sales at SPS Commerce. And with me is Linda Adufier, who's a sales engineer. We both specialize in the Oracle space and work a lot with JDE on the pre sale side and with partners. Got about 10 slides that we'll go through. And then I will turn it over to Linda for a demonstration of our uh, system automation solution. Uh, but overall, we're going to talk about our full service approach, our network, and that automation platform that we feel is uh, very much a, a leader, a leading solution out there for JDE, and one that you know not a lot of a lot of folks out there can rival. And it could be a, a potential game changer for you as if you're looking uh, to enhance what you're doing with EDI today. In terms of SPS, just a little background there: we spent 20 years building our network, where we've got 80,000 pre-map connections. We're the world's largest retail network that includes retailers, suppliers, carriers, and uh, and others, uh, and about 3,000 3, buying or organizations in our network are retailers, 31,000 suppliers, 1,000 3PLs, and, and more security, every security certification you could possibly want. We've been uh, public for 10 years, just celebrated that 10-year anniversary, 1,500 employees, 11 global offices, headquarters in Minneapolis, but again, have been doing this for 20 years and have really established ourselves as the leader in our space. And a lot of that has to do with just addressing the complexity of EDI overall, because of, uh, if you add it up and all the things that you have to do and know in order to have a successful EDI program, we call it the seven components. We've written a white paper that's available uh, if you'd like to read more about that. But in order to have a successful EDI program, you've got to have technology, that's table stakes, uh, the partner expertise, and that's where it starts to get complicated because those 3,000 different buying organizations or retailers are gonna have requirements that uh, you know they, they dictate exactly how everything needs to be transacted between themselves and the rest of the supply chain. So you have to have people who know how to trade with those folks and their different order fulfillment models, the, the mapping requirements they have, and the different communication channels, and all the changes. So all told, we do about 9,000 different changes on behalf of retailers. And if you're running EDI on your own, you gotta know what those are and be able to, to make those changes and put those in place. You have to have someone who can design and set up and, and help you uh, get your system going. Uh, similarly to the complexity in terms of what's dictated by the retailers, you have to know exactly how they communicate, whether that's AS2, FTP or VAN, they have very specific testing and launch requirements as well that you have to know and manage. And then you have to have the ongoing support to run it and be able to proactively monitor and analyze what's going on so you can make business decisions and, and pivot and do the things that you need to do to be successful. So historically, many of these solutions really only meet part of the need. So when we're talking about, if you think about historically what's uh, kind of how the market is shaped up at the very beginning. You know, if you think about how IT worked in the 2000s, you've got uh, a lot of folks who are, uh, you know, managing IT on their own, and you've got your own IT staff, you've got your own hardware. Then over time, you've got a more of a managed service model where they might give you some some technology, some design help, and some some support help. And that's you know that managed service model. A lot of what folks have tried to do is apply that to EDI, but it it's, tends to result in a lot of cases in some issues because you can't always uh, take all of that and orchestrate that into JD Edwards in particular. So what we often find is that because folks have uh, you know, some 
uh, inability to see what's going on with their data or they can't orchestrate it or apply business rules. They tend to have unplanned complexity where they have uh, their IT teams are spending an inordinate amount of time uh, worrying about EDI. It's hard to onboard customers. You, you're unable to scale internally, so you've got a lot of IT folks who are spending too much time doing that, and then you've got business users who can't necessarily access uh, the data that they need in order to do their job. Errors tend to pile up, and that, again, puts a big strain on IT. You've got unexpected unexpected costs there along with uh, unforeseen chargebacks and fees. So that's something that we've identified and really tried to address with, with how we approach the JDE market in particular, where, and this is something that we do for, for all systems, but how it applies specifically for JDE makes a lot of sense because ultimately at the end of the day, you don't necessarily need to know what all those different requirements changes are. Uh, that retailers are going to put in place every year. It's, it's simply not strategic to your business. So what we found and the reason why we've grown into the leadership position that we have today uh, is, is the kind of the cornerstone of what we do is providing the technology that leads the market. It's all cloud-based, uh, native cloud. We've got the team of experts on staff here as part of our 500-person customer success department uh, that's going to help you get up and running and then uh, see that through all the way to implementation and then the support staff that we have 24 by 7 365 to keep what you're doing uh, running smoothly in terms of jd edwards itself we've got 300 customers today that run jde that are in our network about 3200 trading partner connections up to about 400,000 documents processed per month. So a lot of experience working with folks who are running JDE and then also different options in terms of integrating with the uh, with JDE, whether that's file-based or whether that's directly with system 47 tables. All right, so in terms of technology and how and why our network approach uh, has been popular, I should say, is that if, if you look here, and this is what we would call more of a common architecture that you see with legacy systems. So again, we're talking about, you've got a translator potentially, and then you've got IT staff who are, who are running that. Maybe you have a managed service, but then you are responsible for the orchestration and to, to JDE. So you've got, uh, for every document type, uh, for every partner, you have a separate map that you have to manage. So that might start off kind of simple, but then as you grow over time, it can be pretty much of a hairball. So if you think about uh, those IT requirements and what your folks have to do if you're managing EDI on your own is that they're gonna spend a ton of time in this area on the left here, communicating out to the trading partner and then developing all the maps and establishing those communication protocols and then converting and doing the, the translation and then the orchestration into JD Edwards. So that's what we would call a, a common legacy in, environment. And what we've done is to try to dramatically simplify that. So you take that left side that you saw and you condense that. And what we really try to do is just insulate our partners from all of that complexity and manage that all internally. So we are the ones that are making the phone calls out to trading partners to test on our customers' behalf. We are making the changes on their behalf. We are applying uh, standardization of that data, uh, applying business rules in the cloud, uh, dealing with those communication layers, providing basic validations, alerts, and all the reporting you need to run your business, and then providing that single output for each map. So instead of dealing, if you're an enterprise organization, instead of dealing with hundreds of maps, you've just got the one per, per, per doc type. And then where GSI comes in is helping us and working with you to set up your JD Edwards system so that we can uh, get all that data orchestrated and automated into Edwards for you. So uh, all told at the end of the day, again, if I were to give you just a couple takeaways on, on our value and our approach, it's full service. It's taken off uh, that non-strategic work off your plate. It is that network approach that allows us to insulate you from change and risk. And then it's the end-to-end -end component as well that allows us to, to automate data meaning you can get hands off keyboards and you can uh, ensure your IT resources are, are spending their time uh, on more meaningful projects that are strategic to your business.
So with that, I will hopefully get a better transition here. I'm gonna hand it over to Linda, who's going to walk us through the demo. Thank you, Matt. Um, I just shared my screen, so hopefully everybody can see it. Um, before I walk us through this demo, uh, just want to level set by saying, um, ultimately, uh, the environment that I'm going to be showing you is fully set up and maintained by SPS. Um, we have a lot of tools and capabilities that we have available for our customers, and we set you up based on uh, whatever your needs are with the, uh, the best tools. Um, that make the most sense for you as a business. So uh, the main goal of this is to just walk you through what our capabilities are. And then if you'd like to have some further conversations, we're definitely happy to have that um, after the call as far as what we can offer. The first thing that I'm showing you here is um, our the, the, the dashboard that we have available. Uh, this dashboard is fully customizable based on user role. So uh, for this user, it's a customer service rep who needs to know a breakdown of uh, the orders that have been received uh, via EDI in the last 45 days, and then what that breakdown is um, across all the different partners. Um, you'll see an ongoing theme here where uh, we, based on uh, the way we approach our implementation for our customers, we take all of the EDI out of it, and our goal is to make everything as human readable for you as possible and ensure that you're not spending so much time on the EDI and focusing on your business. When you want to go in to do a search, uh, maybe it's for a specific item number or a specific order, this search functionality here is fully customizable. So for this user, they want the ability to be able to come in and search for, search for an item number if they wanted to. And then when you go in to view the actual order, so this search capability can be applied to any document types that you're trading with your trading partner from an EDI perspective. Uh, we pull all of the information out of the EDI so the data is displayed to you in a human readable format. So if this user wanted to know um, what the price was that was sent on a specific item, uh, they can quickly and uh, easily be able to come in and be able to see that. Um, so that's the very first thing is we want to uh, make things as easy for you as possible. As part of our network approach, um, we do know that uh, we, we all of your trading partner requirements already. So as part of the initial process we go through with setting up your solution, we work with you to pull together a list of all of the requirements across all of your partners. The other thing that we're doing is also working with you to understand uh, your System 47 tables, have they been set up, um, where all of that data should map to. With that also, we understand that there's typically going to be um, some business rules that need to be applied to your system. So in the case of JDE, for instance, uh, sometimes we'll have customers who want us to validate uh, maybe the address that's being sent or um, the, the item number information that's been sent by their customer just because sometimes your trading partner is not going to send the right item number. And you just want to make sure that before that data gets entered into GDE and sales order gets created, it actually looks right. Um, with that, then our business analyst goes through and works with you to define some business rules that can be reusable across each and every one of your partners that we're implementing. So in this case, then we're able to validate the buyer part number based on information that we have the ability to pull directly out of your, um, your, your JDE tables and populate within our database so that we're validating that. And then the next thing is, okay, great, SPS, you validated the data, um, so now what? You know, what do we do with that data? Say if, um, if you sent us a shipping notification and the bill of lading number was missing, or if your partner was to send us an order and uh, the item number was not valid. In that case, then um, we have what we call human workflow. So we've worked with you, we've defined those uh, business rules, which are reusable across all of your partners. So as we implement additional partners, we're not rewriting those rules, we can leverage them. And then with that, we work with you to understand exactly what action you would like to take based on the validation that uh, takes place. So if we find that, say, a bill of lading number is missing, um, then we have the ability to stop that data and send an email notification out to a specific user within the warehouse, for instance, 
or if it's something to do with the invoice, then we have the ability to send an email out to someone in accounts receivable to let them know that there's an issue so that they can take the next action that's needed. So using the built missing bill of lading number example, we send an email and in that email, there's a link to this environment. And what then we do is we pull up the high level information associated with that document. So in this case, it's notifying this user that, hey, this shipment number for this order is missing the bill of lading number. The user can then enter that bill of lading number and then confirm it. And once they do that, we add that information into the data that we already have within our system and then send it along its way. And then with addition, in addition to that, with JDE, we have the ability to write that information back into the tables if you wanted us to. So that's just a couple of the different things that we have available. Uh, we maintain uh, tables for items and addresses based on whatever validation that you have. So this is an example, and uh, we work with you to define business tools that are applicable to your specific environment. The other thing that we do also is because we're acting as your EDI department, then uh, we know that you need to have full visibility, but at the same time, we're the ones who are keeping track of all of the data that's being exchanged and that's running through our environment. With that, then we're keeping track of the data and making sure that if there's an issue, so this is an example of a document that's run through our system, and we're making sure that if there's an issue, say if there was an issue with processing that data, and um, it failed within our environment for whatever reason, this box would then turn red. And with it turning red, it's actually notifying someone within our environment to let them know that there's an issue with the data that's processing through our system. So we're your first line of defense as far as your EDI data that's flowing through SPS. So in addition to the validation to notify you if there's an issue that you need to fix on your side, if there's an issue with processing the data, our team is uh, assigned on focusing on this and making sure that they dig into it, and then working with you if there's any adjustments that are needed on your side. Um, so those are just a few examples of the capabilities that we have. Like I mentioned, um, we have a lot more <laughs> that we can share, but we don't have enough time. <laughs> so uh, I would love to be able to share some additional information with you after this call. Um, so feel free to let us know if you have any questions. Chat your questions within the questions box. Um, but for now, I will turn it back over to Matt um, so that he can um, work through the uh, the rest of the presentation. And for some reason, it's not coming up. There we go. All right. Thanks, Linda. Appreciate it. So yeah, just to wrap up, and again, as Linda said, uh, those were some of the highlights and just how we are able to automate transactions, JDE transactions, uh, more than we have in the past or anybody has in the past, just in terms of taking on that EDI component. And, and everything that we do is part of that full service offering, and then that technology is included in that, including us providing the support and the management of that. So hopefully that. Uh, gave you some some understanding of the workflow and how to reprocess errors and all the, the visibility options that you may be missing today because we do find that to be fairly common with JDE. I've worked with a couple of customers in particular who again maybe didn't uh, have maybe a good intentions and wanted to build out some some functionality within Oracle itself or maybe they had somebody retire that they weren't expecting and they were they found it hard to replace some of those resources. So that's where, again, the outsourced model that we provide can gap into a lot of what, what you may be missing today or maybe uh, you're burdening, or you're burdened with your IT department today that uh, they don't necessarily need to be dealing with. So the benefits that we see when we do find that you're able to automate is, you know, again, I think about another customer who, because of all the errors and having to deal with all the maps, they simply couldn't take on any new customers. So we really find that you're able to onboard customers a lot faster and, and allow your sales team to sell uh, more than they are potentially today if you're limited in that way. Uh, the scalability, again, the ability to add transactions or grow volume both internally and externally and properly allocate your resources is a huge benefit. 
uh, the ability to identify an error and then have a business user be able to process that or reprocess that and send it on a way instead of that going to IT where it might take a couple of days once they get to it to fix it, uh, which will reduce chargebacks and fees as well. And just, I think in general, is great for morale uh, for business users to be able to answer their, their customers directly in IT to focus on uh, non, that, not have to worry about that type of task. And again, reduce IT costs by just not having to spend IT time on basic EDI issues. And then with our model in particular, what's nice about it, again, if you refer back to the, the managed service uh, idea, you know, they give you some stuff and then you end up paying time and materials for the rest that you need to gap into with all of that retailer partner requirements management and uh, set up and everything that you end up doing on your own where we could be doing that for you. And again, I mentioned reduced chargebacks and fees. So th those are the benefits. Um, I'll quickly show here a few of the clients that, that we work with today that are some good names. And again, just want to say thank you to everybody for joining and thank you to GSI for hosting. And uh, as Lin Linda mentioned, we are uh, here to answer any questions. Feel free to contact uh, your GSI account person or, or Brittany or feel free to reach out to SPS Commerce and then we will uh, potentially be able to uh, apply what we've shown you beyond more of that highlight view and, and uh, kind of really show you how it works with some of your specific business processes. So that's what we have for today and I will now, Brittany, if you're ready, I will turn it back over to you. Let me... All right. Perfect. Thank you, Matt and Linda. Um, and now I'm just going to cover up a few follow-up items and then we'll get into the um, question and answer portion of the webinar. Um, check out our ERP talk. It's our problem solving forum where you can get your JD Edwards and other enterprise application questions answered, as well as contribute your answers to others' questions. Stay connected with us on social media. All of our handles are currently listed on the screen. You can see our most up-to-date posts on webcast, events, industry insights, and so much more. Hang on, I'm just gonna mute somebody. There we go. Sorry about that. Um, GSI provides extensive free educational resources, including our weekly educational webcast, our monthly newsletter called the GSI Insider, um, our online resource center where you can access on-demand webcasts, white papers, etc., YouTube, and then we have on-site and virtual uh, workshops as well. If you would like to sign up for our weekly email reminders for our upcoming webcasts or, or our monthly newsletter, um, you can go to our resource center, go to getgsi.com, go to resources and events on the main menu, select your platform, and then select the appropriate link on the right. And now we will move into the questions portion. Um, we do have a couple of questions here submitted. Um, the first question is from Santosh. The question is, does SPS Solution pull the information from custom tables in JDE or only F47 tables? Yeah, that's a good question. We have the ability to pull from any tables that you have set up within JDE. So it's not limited to just the F47 tables. Ultimately, what our implementation team does is we work with you to um, understand where the data is and, and which tables we should be pulling the data from. And then that is what we base our um, solution on. Okay, and then Santosh had another question here. What is the roadmap to include RTE-based architecture along with F47 tables? Yeah, sorry, I was on mute. <laughs> um, yeah, that's a that's a really good question. Um, I know our product team has talked about um, implementing and taking into account like real time events. Um, I'm not sure exactly where we're at as far as the roadmap is concerned. So if you want to reach out to Santosh after this, we can definitely have further conversations on that as far as uh, what the roadmap is and and what our capabilities there and what we're planning as far as that's concerned. Perfect, thank you. And then we have a question here from Alex. As a supplier, what are my general roles and responsibilities? 
yeah, good question. So um, because SPS is the one that is managing um, the communication with your partners, the main thing that we would need from you is mainly um, understanding uh, your business process and, and how you're doing business with your customers, because that's what ultimately drives the requirements within the EDI and the data that you'll be exchanging with EDI. You do also need someone who has the expertise on the JDE side. Um, we are the experts with, with when it comes to JDE, and uh, we we look to you or have someone within your organization to manage the the JDE expertise. And that's kind of why we have partnerships like with GSI, um, where we're able to bring in resources that uh, have that expertise, so that we can collaborate on a reasonable solution that makes sense for you for the long term. Okay, and our next question here is from Amit. What is the cost of in implementing EDI and how do you charge for EDI transactions? Yep, thanks for the question. I can answer that one. So we have typically, we try to make it easy as possible where we've got upfront, uh, upfront pricing and then also recurring pricing. So that upfront cost typically consists of, it depends on the number of partners that you have, along with the number of, of maps that you have and so that we look at that and what that adds up to then on the recurring side it's uh essentially comprised of a, a network fee maintenance fees on the maps and the partners and also the transaction volume so we don't have a simple and easy rate card per se it does scale up and then the, the volume uh those those volume costs are uh scaled as well depending on so if you go higher you pay a little less per transaction i should say uh, that you know, happy to uh, provide that. Obviously, if anybody has a specific example, I can get. We can get a lot more specific on what that cost would be. One of the things we pride ourselves on is, is giving you a fixed and known price that won't change necessarily if we add time and materials. So we give you a scope. If you do exceed your volume, we talk about a, a way to uh, increase the the plan that you're on, but you're not going to get. The types of surprises that you might with other folks uh, based on on the the resources that they suddenly have to provide to you if something comes up so that's that's how we approach that pricing is it's based a lot on that and then the, the final thing i will say is that it is uh, a lot of folks charged by the killer character we charge by the the document so that's a lot easier to understand just because if you're doing like an 855 or something like that it can be uh, the, the file sizes can be a lot bigger and, and it's hard to know what your costs are. So we're a little bit different that way too, where we charge by the document. Perfect. Thank you, Matt. And um, then this looks like one last question here. And if you still would like to submit questions, you can do so through the questions panel in the GoToWebinar console window located on the right um, side of your screen. Um, this question is from Brenda. Do you have an on-premise version that I can buy and set up on my own? Yeah, good question. And the answer is actually no, we, we do not. So again, if you go back to that idea of providing a full service product, that's really what our aim is, is to work with folks who want to outsource that. So even what you saw, what Linda was showing, that's something that uh, we can provide some dashboards and things like that for your for your folks to be able to access data and some of that human workflow, but in terms of providing a uh, some hardware and, and tools that you use on your own and connect on your own, we do not approach the market that way. So everything we do is full service. All of the the, the hardware and, and software and service and support that's all included in that pricing, and that we don't have necessarily another model for that. Perfect, thank you. And that um, appears to be the end of our questions today. Thank you everyone for your questions. As a follow-up from today's webcast, we ask that you complete a short one minute survey when you exit. You will be receiving a link, an email with a link to our resource center on our website where you can access the recording from today's webcast as well as a copy of the presentation. After today's webcast, we will do the drawing for the $25 Amazon gift card. Anyone that intended the entire webcast will be eligible. We will then notify the winner. We just want to thank um, thank you guys again for attending the webcast, and um, thank you so much.
um, Matt and Linda for presenting, and I hope everyone has a great day.